Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. In this episode, I'll show you how to properly add redundant uplink between Omada Gateway and Omada Switch using Spanning Tree Protocol. In my previous video regarding lag or link aggregation, I have shown that multiple uplinks provides increased bandwidth. But equally important that lag also provides redundancy and automatic backup or failover in case one of the links fail. But between gateway and switch, the reason for redundant uplink is purely for failover and automatic backup. The additional uplink will not increase the bandwidth between the devices and I will be implementing spanning tree protocol to achieve this. So currently between the new gen and the next gen LAN design, this has been our blueprint design. As can be seen from the version number, it has gone multiple revisions and in the month of September, I figured I'll add even more features. So while this design offers redundant connectivity to the internet, as you can see here, there is no redundant uplink. So this is very important because it connects everything else to the network. If this link fails, the whole network goes down. So with this particular revision to the design, if one link fails, there's a redundant uplink that will ensure that connectivity and inter VLAN traffic and all the other critical traffic still functions, still have connectivity to the internet and make sure everything are functioning normally. So with this revision, I'm covering the uplink between the gateway and the switch. This will make your Omada home network more resilient to downtime. Okay, so before we continue, I want to ask for your help that if you find this episode helpful and useful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help the channel. Okay, so for this design, I'm going to use my ER8411 and SG2210MP. We're not going to use the EAP235 in this particular episode, only the uplinks between these two. Okay. So this uplink, this purple line in the screen that you can see, this is represented by this particular uplink. Because this one is actually connected to my OC300 controller. This two, are one uplink. So I have one uplink one, I have one uplink two, and then I have this particular one, this uplink, actually this is the trunk port connected to the switch, and this one is just dedicated connected to the OC300 because I don't have any more ports in here. We are going to provide multiple uplinks from the switch to the gateway. You would think, no problem, right? All I have to do is just put another cable. However, putting cable without any planning or configuration on Omada will have some unforeseen issues such as broadcast storm or loop in your network. So let me just quickly show you how all my networks are connected so that you will see how each ports are set up. So you can see here, all these VLANs are defined on all the ER8411 LAN interfaces. You can see here they are all defined here. So that's VLAN 10. Let's check VLAN 1. VLAN 1, all LAN interfaces. And VLAN 20. So I'll just go through it quickly. So okay, that's VLAN 50. 60, okay, 70, 80, 90, okay. so these are all system created, and then VLAN 94, okay. and then VLAN 96, so you can see they are all defined on all the VLANs, and let's just look at the profile again, let's just look at the profile all, because this is the one we're going to test, so as you can see there's no way for me to change or edit this, so that's VLAN all, that's all the VLANs. So let me go back to the devices. Let me add one more uplink here. So let's use this one. So let me open up this switch here and ports. So you can see here port four. So this one is port four. Okay. So I'm going to connect it here. So let's see how it's going to behave. If you guys have your eyes looking at here, you can see 
that the light is not turning on. There's no uplink here, okay? But it's connected, right? This is connected. So what's happening is the loopback is being prevented from this connectivity. So you can see port four still not showing online. And if I go to ER8411, and you can see the port one LAN nine is also still not up. So just adding additional uplink cable between the two switches does not make it redundant. And you will also see the lag started to report that certain port in the switch is being blocked. So let's see here, the logs, and you can see here that port four is being blocked. So this is a good thing because what's happening is that the switch is preventing a broadcast storm because if it's not being blocked, what's going to happen is that it's going to continue to transfer all the broadcast again and again and again into a continuous loop and then it will saturate the CPU and memory of all the network devices and the whole network is going to shut down. So let's continue to observe. Okay, as you can see, it's ping-ponging between port 4 and port 1 and to fix this we need to enable spanning tree protocol so to do that you have to go to devices and then the switch and then config okay and go to services and you can see here you have stp and rstp so one is the industry standard spanning tree protocol this is the older standard but what we're going to use is rstp or rapid spanning tree protocol which is the newer one and faster to converge in our current setup it doesn't really matter much because i only have one switch but if you have more switches it's always better to choose rstp okay so let me choose this one just leave everything by default don't worry about this in the future i'll cover this how to change this as well and why you would need to change that but for now, RSTP, accept everything by default and click apply. So you're enabling rapid spanning tree protocol on your switch. Okay. But now you need to apply those functionalities on your ports. Okay, so to go to ports, and then you can see here all. So edit this. Okay. Okay, make sure this one is selected if it's not selected so click profile overrides and in here click spanning tree and then click apply now that's applied we need to select another one which is port 4 okay select port 4 and let me override the profile here as well and do spanning tree here then click apply okay succeeded so let's see the logs and i'm going to clear these logs okay. you can see here port one port zero. it's ping ponging between port four and port one blocking i'm going to clear all the logs so that we can see if there are any new logs going to show up but there should be none now that we have already fixed the issue all right so we can see here that connectivity is up okay and what you will notice as well is that you can see the light is up here. It's it's active, it's active, it's active. But at the same time, all the links are active. Okay. So if we go here to ER8411, you can see this port 9 is also active. Okay. See ports. There you go. And then if you go to the switch, you can see there is uh, an icon here showing blocking. Okay spanning tree blocking okay, so this is the best way to do redundant uplink between your switch and your gateway make sure you enable spanning tree on your switch and on a particular port you enable spanning tree protocol so let's go to click the ports and you will see the same icon here and let's remove this uplink And you will see that it's a quest timed out. So just waiting for it to go back. Thing. 
There you go. Press on that. And then let's go to Umada controller and let's see what's the status of these ports in here. So let me do a refresh. And you can see that the link is down and the port is up. Okay. And there's still no log error, which is a good thing. And let me go open this back up. There you go. Let's look at the request time doubt. While it's still trying to sort out how to bring back the new port or how to configure it in the Umada network. Okay. Let's see here. So to check the status of STP other than from this area, you can also go to insights and again, check on the switch status. And you can see it's switching here okay and you can see that this port port 4 is discarding while your port 1 is forwarding and uh, last but not the least you can also check the status of spanning tree and the switch using the terminal interface See, this is the local bridge is the root bridge and you can see also the port information and their designation and their mode so rstp designated port blocking port it's forwarding and this one is blocking or discarding and link aggregation is disabled okay okay so i think that's uh, pretty much it i hope you like this video i hope you learned something from this video if you like it, please give it a like. If you don't like it, please give it a dislike. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.